Hello! Hi. <laughs> Welcome uh, back to our first 2018 live cast Woo. here on Facebook. Um, we are standing today because I am in my new stays. 18th century stays. Mm -hmm. And the uh, subject matter of today's live cast is stays. Uh, surprise. We're not talking about dogs. <laughs> no, we're not talking about dogs. Um, this is a Q&A about 18th century stays. And the reason that we wanted to do this is because there's a lot of confusion and mm -hmm. questions and you know, where do you start, especially from those beginning, because yeah. you kind of need to start with the hardest thing to make. It's to, not sucky. <laughs> yeah. But it means you get it out of the way really quickly, right? Um, and because our simplicity patterns have just come out, and one of these patterns is for um, an underpinnings packet that includes stays. So we want to um, tell you a little bit about mm -hmm. the decisions that we made for these, yeah. um, which are displayed on mine. Now, these stays are not that this pattern, pattern. No. but they do exhibit a lot of the things that are mm -hmm. in this pattern. Um, so for those of you wondering, Simplicity 8579 is the new accurate underpinnings packet. Had my Go face on it. it. That's Abby. That's my face. Hello. I'm Abby. I'm a muse. Anyway. <laughs> those are those patterns <laughs> which are now on the floor. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. That's a really Hi. Hi, Abby's mom. Hi, Jennifer. <laughs> okay. So um, we are live. Yes. It is 12 noon on uh, Pacific time. And Doris is staring at us like <laughs> she's she's easy what are you guys doing? Can't and see her, and if can. you have questions, type them in the comment box down down there. Yeah. They're going to come up on our screen and we will answer them live. Now that That's being said, can. later, in probably about an hour, we're no. not going to be live anymore. Nope. You can still comment and we will just answer them with other comments um, the best that we can. Okay? Yeah. Sweet. Hello. Hello, Knoxville. Deborah, nice, yeah. nice of you to join us. All right, so. So, stays. Where do you want to start with those? Stays. Do you want to talk about yours? I can talk about mine. The ones uh, you, you right. battle-axed over I battle Christmas break. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, I needed some new stays. Mm -hmm. um, the last pair of stays I made was from the uh, previous Simplicity 8162 pattern, mm -hmm. the uh, Highlander pattern, mm -hmm. and they were a little short-waisted for me. Mm -hmm. um, I recently put up a how to lengthen stays uh, post on the blog, which you guys can go and uh, we'll, we'll put a link to it in the comments of, of how to do that because mine did come out short-waisted and that seems to be the issue for a lot of mm -hmm. different people. So I need a new stays. Yeah. And I decided I was going to do them um, the most historically accurately constructed stays that I've ever done. Mm -hmm. So now that's with a caveat. <laughs> uh, so what I mean when I say that is I've done all of, here. Let's zoom in on my boobs. I've done all my eyelets <laughs> by hand. Um, I bound them by hand in leather. Mm -hmm. I did like the underarm patches, mm -hmm. seam coverings. All the seams are whipped. Yeah, um, by but hand. I yeah. by hand. Yes, Ooh, fingers, whole fingers, because I I don't use. She doesn't wear a thimble. Yeah. What did we learn in making these stains? <laughs> Thimbles are good. Holes in my fingers. Anyway, <laughs> what I did not do um, by hand was sew the boning channels. And here's a hot tip for you guys. If you use like a heavy thread like buttonhole twist and you adjust the um, tension on your machine and run your boning channels, because there's a lot of stitching involved there, it kind of looks enough like hand sewn back stitches. Well, you can't even see it since you've, you've made yours out of this. <laughs> like, I can barely even see her boning channels. So it's like, oh. Yeah, it's not something that I care enough about to do by hand, but the other parts I do. Yeah. So I want the hand sewn eyelids. I want the um, uh, hand done binding and, and all of that the fun stuff. The one thing that I think, other than boning <laughs> channels, that other than Cynthia Secchi from Red Threaded, who can, who's figured out how to do this on a machine, you still have to do it by hand and it's terrible. Which, which part? Oh, the, the boning yeah. channels. Yeah. No, the boning channels, no, the, the, the tabs. The, the binding and the tabs. Yeah. So you can see my little mm -hmm. tippy tabs there. Um, and then I whipped the, the inside um, mm -hmm. part, which has to do with fitting because I had to fit these like three different times. Mm -hmm. So my stays lace back and front. Mm -hmm. Cause that's what she likes. Because I need to get into them myself. And you don't. I don't do the over the head thing. I'm getting old, I have limited mobility. <laughs> I'm lazy. Um, <laughs> so I do lacing front and back. Yeah. Um, and what that means is sometimes you have to do a little adjustment here mm -hmm on this line for mm -hmm. when because when you let it out these points tend to kind of like come up so yeah. you create more of a like a sloped a very, neckline yeah, very soft so if you're doing the front lacing stays which the simplicity 8162 um, does the front lacing mm -hmm. you may need to adjust 
this mm -hmm. line here so that it doesn't point upwards, mm -hmm. which was an issue with my previous days. Yeah. Okay, so you guys, at any time, you can put questions mm -hmm. in. We've Sisa? already been asked about the straps. Oh, so we might as well just go in. there because that's what okay. most people have been asking us about. So, away. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so one of the things that Lauren uh, incorporated on these stays this time that she didn't do on her other ones after seeing uh, my couple of pair of my stays and then what Maggie, our friend Maggie did um, on on hers as well she incorporated these um their twill tape uh shoulder straps and there's a couple different ways you can actually attach them to the stays and if you look at original uh images of stays in museum collections if you start looking you'll actually see that they're they're pretty common especially towards the end of the uh kind of like 1770s and 80s time period um so she incorporated them into her pattern we have them in the simplicity pattern as well so that way it's just another option for you. Um, they are about one inch wide twill tape. You can make them um, wider. You can make them wider. Don't it's, make them thinner. <laughs> no, that's a comfort <laughs> issue. Um, and she actually, can you turn around? Yeah. So she actually attached them to the shoulder points here that hit at the tendon at the ar underarm. Um, and what that does is that will help kind of push the stays back into, into your shoulders here. It, it's really uncomfortable to lean forward yeah. or hunch over when you have those kind of pull crossing them in the back and then bringing them forward to the front and hooking them into place you can one it's adjustable two it actually helps hold your shoulders back mm -hmm. so it helps keep that posture into place it helps hold the stays in the right position as well um, especially if you ever want to lace your stays a little bit more loosely than what you normally do say it's really hot and you're uncomfortable if you lace your stays too loose sometimes they can start to fall because they're not sitting in the right position by having the shoulder straps there it helps actually keep the stays where you want them to be um, so that's an important thing about shoulder straps and they're low profile on her shoulder so we've all had that problem slippy where you make straps. those shoulder straps for your stays and like they kind of start creeping up your neck or they fall off your shoulder or they're too wide or they're too bulky and they affect how your gowns fit and maybe you want like a nice wide open neckline but your shoulder straps come up to here and what are you going to do about it by doing this it's actually really yeah. low profile so <laughs> here's the cool thing about these straps is they cross in the back yeah and they come around to the front and then there's these hooks here mm -hmm. these now i've got kind of small ones they're Let's just they're just hooks and eyes but abby's got some monstros on hers that which on work these. better yeah these are closer to the original what you'd see in originals so really big meaty ones here um, so yeah, I got these from Burnley and Trowbridge. Um, I just threw the eye part away. I just kept the hook. Yeah. Um, but really big, really sturdy. Yeah. Um, so they can really hold, yeah. um, into place. And what you do is you pull on this strap. It's mm -hmm. pulling this shoulder back mm -hmm. and then you don't need to sew eyelets or anything because you're using the twill tape. You just mm -hmm. hook it on yeah. that hook and it stays there mm -hmm. now. And then you have, you have these now yes. that being said on the simplicity pattern. We don't really know. They didn't, okay, so here's the, I'm gonna grab this real quick. Yeah. Um, so when we made the mock-up that I wear, I included the hooks and eyes, and if you look at me on the pattern pack, my straps are hooked and eyed. Um, so we were <laughs> surprised to find this um, uh, I, I don't blame simplicity for not knowing what the heck we were doing here because yeah. it's a fairly new thing. You guys are kind of wacky by it. Crazy. Um, so simplicity has illustrated and also describes that you tie these in the front. Don't do that because it doesn't. It won't hold them no. in place. No. Now, if you tie them and you hook them under your front point in a It'll bow, hold. that will hold. That It'll will hold it. Fine. You don't get the fun like tightening or loosening throughout the day with the hook. Well, yeah, that's kind of like what's nice is that <laughs> <laughs> if you're like, someone's like, oh God, my shoulders are killing me. Stick your hands yeah. in the petticoat pockets, grab the straps, pull down, and then loosen them up uh. a little bit, and then you're fine. It's a really yeah. nice little trick. Yeah, it's a, or if you just are like, oh, there's a really cute guy coming. You're like, <laughs> you can tighten them up. Um, so, but if you tie them underneath here, yeah, that, that can kind of work like that. Yeah. Um, so it's really your choice. We like the hooks. So that's it's why easier. the hooks are there on the pattern. They're not to hook mm -hmm. your gown to your stays. That's not necessary. <laughs> yeah. Um, so those of you who are confused by mm -hmm. that, yeah, I understand. Okay. I know we had a lot of questions further back. We well, we were asked. We have one just now about spiral lacing. Yeah, actually, when you look at 18th century stays, what you I don't think I've ever seen anything that's crisscross laced. Only if it's decorative. Yeah. It's it, if it's lacing something up, it's spiral laced. Um, it's actually really easy to do. 
Yeah, the, the lacing holes are just offset. Yeah. The simplicity pattern um, does have spiral lacing holes. Set up, yeah. And you just, you just run yeah. one lace, and then at the top, this is where I've got it tied off. So yeah. that's my yeah. end there. So, and if you look at like funny museum collection ones, then what you'll see is like, a, they, they try to crisscross lace them, <laughs> and like everything's like cattywampus and weird. Um, so it's pretty funny. But yeah, so... So these are really cool. My yellow stays um, that I wear for the sack in the book, um, this is really cool. When I worked at Colonial Williamsburg, we had um, Mark Cutter, who is now Master Tailor. Um, he's also the person who taught me stay making. Um, he, he had a, a reproduction of an original pair that were held in a private collection um, that had these shoulder straps on them. And we would sit in the shop and go, well, what are these used for? How did they work? What were their actual purpose? Was it for this? Was it for that? Blah, 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 blah. Well, I wanted to figure it out. I need to make a new pair of stays. So that's kind of what set me down this rabbit hole of these twill tape shoulder strap things. Um, mine on my yellow stays are a little bit different. So you do have more than one option when it comes to how you fasten them. If you're really into posture, <laughs> this, is, this, posture. Is, this is the way to do it. Um, so mine actually start... They start in the back. They're, they're back yeah. here and they loop around the shoulder. They start back here. This is like a modern posture brace. And then, and then, so it goes through like this, but it is not attached to my, the, sh the point here, the tendon point there. Um, it's attached back here because that's what the original pair had and I wanted to see what they would do. Um, if I was to cut these off, if I ever felt like it, mm -hmm. um, I would actually put them here <laughs> just because my, my points there can get a little wackadoodle. And if you're, if you're really curious, you can see I have an eyelet there because I had originally done those bulkier shoulder straps and they weren't working. Um, so, so you have a few different options. This part, um, this piece of tape right here that goes in the back, like what you see Lauren, and this can be adjusted. This is important to have because if you don't have this here, this is going to start creeping all the way up your neck. Um, and my hands are really cold, I'm sorry. Um, so this is also something that I learned the hard way because I, one, mine have come undone or I didn't do it and it just creeps up the neck. So you have to actually put those in there to hold them in place. So you can adjust where that goes depending on what's more comfortable for you, um, but you can, you can do that. Don't forget that part. That's an important part. Very important. So that's the Chris Crossy straps. Woo! They're accurate. I like them. I like yeah. to have that nice pulled back yeah. lo uh, silhouette. Um, it keeps, it also keeps these in place, yeah. which controls this. Yeah. Which um, is why I wanted to, I really should change mine because Audrey. Yeah. And if you have a pair of stays that have the thicker shoulder straps mm -hmm. and you're like, oh, I hate these, you can just cut them off. Yeah. And put these easy. on. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. Um, like we said, if you go with a narrower tape, um, it's going to cut. It's going to cut. I have had marks because um, my yeah. summer stays or my 90 stays, these I used a uh, half inch I don't know how she wears these. linen tape. They just look so painful. It, it really hurts after a while. So I actually wear them kind of loose. I don't, I don't really pull on them to keep my shoulders back like the twill tape. But a one inch twill tape is really actually the most comfortable yeah. thing. And the Philly and the, ones have really wide ones. Yeah. And the, the original, the repro that Mark reproduced, it had the twill tape on them. And that's that's why I, I used it to begin with. And yeah, yeah, there's the pair in the McCord Museum that are stunning oh, that everyone McCord. always shares. I'm sorry, I thought they were Philly. Um, <laughs> no, no, these are, these are Philly. Those are Philly, Philly mm -hmm. with the thin straps. McCord yeah. is the ones with the thick straps. Yeah, and it's beautiful and has a really big thick straps. And those actually have the worked eyelets on them too. Yep. Yeah. So you could do that, but why? So, Don't do that. It's a lot of um, work. So further back in time, um, Bridget has a question about: Did stays change a lot in silhouette throughout the 18th century? Yeah, excellent they did. question. <laughs> um, they started off much more conical, much more rigid, and a bit higher up. And then over time, they just kind of dropped and got softer and softer and softer. Um, so that's actually why we did this kind of pattern. Um, so it's a full bone stays pattern with the vertical boning versus Very even the, the V shape, which is really easy to change, but it's to give just a slightly different silhouette for earlier in the 18th century. Um, it yes. just gets thrustier and thrustier. There's more and more boob as time goes on. Basically, really. yeah. Um, you, you get from like... Also change a bit to waist length, um, but yeah. Kind of flat the front to mm -hmm. more like... Thrusting. <laughs> curved like a curved front it's like a bend and snap for the 18th century yeah. it's like huh. bend and snap Sorry. and you you get a lot of changes <laughs> i wouldn't say a lot but you get changes in the shape of the seams yeah the further uh, along in the 18th century you go you start with kind of 
just diagonal seam or like yeah. a fairly straight seam, and then they start to yeah. curve against a straight. So in mm -hmm. these days, this seam here mm -hmm. plays a vital role in the shape here. Yeah. So there, this is and actually also, curved, mm -hmm. and then it comes. You cut in here. these on the straight too, but you also see these cut on the bias, the front cut on the bias as well. Yeah. Um, so to make it even so more curvy, springier. So, so my days, the center fronts are actually cut on the bias, and that really helps as well. Um, Anne Berlin asks, when did that curve begin? It was about the 1770s, 1770s that you start, yeah. and then the 80s get very like, hello, because the pigeon powder yeah. thing. And then the 90s, as we all know, is... It, it just, yeah. It's very, the stays become shorter, and then shorter and shorter and shorter, yeah. and looser and, and softer, and then they start becoming bust corsets. Line. Yeah. Um, any recommendation for stays for ladies with a full bust, um, like a bust cup E and F or up, mm -hmm. but small under bust measurement? Well, I'm almost there. <laughs> um, I think it's just fitting and comfort. I think um, this is going to get really kind of personal. I think breast tissue has a lot to do with stays and comfort as well. Totally. Because yeah. if, you, if you're if you firmer or softer, the way your body is going to react in stays is going to change. And so if say that you have a large chest and your tissue is a bit more firmer, it might be more comfortable for you to actually add some padding in there to kind of help hold everything up, especially if you are such narrow, if, you're, if you are narrow in the underbust and the rib cage, so that way you're not having a sinking issue or if you can lace it down a little bit to be more comfortable, um, that also works too. Like I actually can lace down quite a bit despite how large and in charge I can be um, <laughs> because of just how my body is. Um, and that's what's comfortable for me. And when Laura looks at me, she goes, how did you do that? How did you do that? I'm I, like, I don't lace down very much. I, yeah. I have kind of a slight frame, but I just don't compress very much. I'm um, super squishy. For earlier in the century, you get with the very straight front yeah. stays, you actually get these huge bowed fronts that yeah. are completely false, where it's not compressing your body at all. Mm -hmm. So your your boobs are just gonna kind of sit in there, but they were filling those things out with padding. Yeah, actually, oh, thank you for bringing that up. Um, the There's a pair of blue silk stays in the LACMA collection that I got to study, totally and done. those suckers are so structured and they're padded on the inside and they're super rigid and they're padded in such a way that yeah it bows out here and it just kind of sits there like your body's just kind of locked and you're loaded just kind of in it. it yeah um it's not really forming you you're <laughs> just kind of sitting in there and it's creating the shape yeah um and that one in fact has like a quarter inch wide steel busk down the middle of it um and it's about a millimeter thick just right down the center front and it's super shaped around it um, there's ties on the inside to help create that more pointed shape too that you see in the earlier time period with stays um, so, so yeah, it gets kind of, there's a lot going on there. In 80 stays, you also see horizontal bony that will yeah. help hold that shape out. Yeah. So that way it can accommodate your body better. So it really does come down to fitting these and just figuring out what works for you. What is most comfortable for you. Don't be afraid to mess with the boning layout. Yeah. Even like the full bone stays here. If you need to add a horizontal bone on the inside, do it. Um, it's not unheard of. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't um, have to show on the outside, yeah. um, or it can. The other thing for a full bust adjustment that really, really helps is we talked about that curve, yeah. that, that S-shaped seam here. It might be more extreme for you, where yeah. it's, it's curvier, con concavier here, and then convexier there, yeah. to use technical terms, yeah. uh, so that you have enough space and support here mm -hmm. This is also, and this mm -hmm. is for later 18th century, this is also an adjustment point to allow yeah. space for your, your mm -hmm. boobular region. Because, like, I'm a child and I can't <laughs> actually say breasts. Um, I think <laughs> another thing to keep in mind, and this is something that you see in originals and also what, what Mark Cutter teaches as well, is that um, add a lot of seam allowance when you make these up. Just with anything, um, add, add at least an inch all the way around even, on all even sides, the neckline, even the top and the bottom, even the taps. Um, so that way you can sit there and pinch in and, cause it might be that you might pinch in a little bit. The center front is like right here and everything else is fine. Or you need to take them in here. Like full disclosure with these, oh. I really like every time I put them on, I was like, ah, oh, oh, I was like pinching at them cause I wanted to take it in just ever so slightly yeah, to get right at my more. waist to get a little bit more of a curve in. Um, and, and I didn't, and it's just those little nuances that when you have enough seam allowance, it's really easy to do. Um, and you just cut it off, whip it down, lay it down. It also makes it easy to adjust later on too, if you need to let something out or take something in. Yeah. Sir. 
So we had some good questions um, a little bit back in time. Mm -hmm. So uh, we had a question about what boning. That's a great question. Um, we had another question about how do you apply the leather binding? Um, Blood, and sweat, and tears. How high up should the stays come on the back? So really, really good mm -hmm. questions. Uh, which, mm -hmm. which would you like to start Let's with? Let's do the back one because that one's okay. can't turn around. Um, so Lauren's ha Lauren has hers in a pretty good place. Um, they're not actually lowered these two. Yeah, they're like they're kind of in the mid shoulder blade area. It, this does kind of come down to a little bit of personal preference, but also how you're making your clothing. These are pretty low. In the yeah, back. and they're lower than actually what I wanted them to be. Like I don't actually know what happened these, there. Yeah, yeah. I looked. I was like, huh, that's weird. Huh. Um, but so, they're not too low. But no, 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 they're okay. They're okay. But having them a little bit higher, if especially if you're having someone fit something on you or anything. It helps, one, keep your kind of back straight as well, so you're not kind of leaning back into it, but also it makes it easier to do a fitting as well. Um, so as someone who, like, will fit on Lauren, I like having the higher <laughs> higher back in the stays reference. for that as a reference. You don't want them too high because you don't want them creeping out the back of your gown. Yeah. Um, and you don't want them too low either. So usually aim for, I would say, what, mid-shoulder blade? Yeah. Like, because yours are about mid-shoulder blade. Yeah, and, like, like the, wor the working woman's stays tend to be a little bit lower Wait. where they're kind of straight around here yeah um more fashionable stays come up a little bit higher yeah but there is such a thing as too high uh, for instance the this is actually one of my favorite patterns but the the butterick uh basic stay pattern mm. it's, it's pretty good um it comes up too high it mm. comes up to like up here oh yeah, uh, yeah. and it's it's just way too high because it peaks yeah. out the top of your gown yeah yeah um, um boning boning um Controversial <laughs> subject ahead. This is, uh, let's, uh, let's just put it this way: you have uh, options. plastics options now. That some of them are cheaper than others. Um, Lauren uses cable ties. I'm actually a big fan of cable ties as well because one, you can go to the local hardware store, you buy the super heavy duty industrial ones, you can cut them with scissors, call you it a day. Get the lighter ones if you, you can, want. You have all the adjustability. Yeah. Do what you need to do. Um, There's also German German, German plastic whale whalebone. Bone. Um, I have not used German plastic whalebone. Some people have said that it does differ from zip ties. Yeah. Some people have said they're basically the same thing. Plastic's plastic. Um, kind of. But I prefer plastic because I feel that, and mm -hmm. you who have actually worked with baleen, mm -hmm. feel that it most accurately resembles yeah. baleen without having to actually use a processed baleen. Yeah. Um, so a lot of people like to use reed or wood splint. Uh, go right ahead. There are it is a correct material to use for historical purposes, um, but there are problems with the modern options today. Um, depending on the quality of the wood or the quality of the reed, how old it is, does it need to be soaked, do you need to, to treat it, is it going to splinter? Like my first pair of stays that I made, I used reed boning and the tabs broke almost instantly the moment I put them on because they couldn't handle the spring from my waist to my hip. It's something to keep in mind. A broken bone in your in your stays is extremely uncomfortable and then you have to pick it apart. You have to pick that leather binding apart. Let's not even get started on that. <laughs> and then rebone it and then it may or may not break again, right? So, so Reed, it, Reed comes with issues. It comes with issues. Um, it is correct. It comes with issues. The thing that you do not want to use is steel. Yeah. Do not use steel in it's your stays no matter <laughs> how much support you think you need steel is a bad idea for stays. well here's the thing here's the thing i actually did a whole blog post about this a long ass time ago steel spring steel the white stuff that is in all the corsets and everything like that that we really used to see it actually is very flimsy and it does this a lot more than even the cable tie suit this is also a technical description uh, <laughs> I'm just everywhere. Um, and it, it's heavy guys yeah. it's so heavy yeah. and if you're trying to make a pair of full bone stays and you bone those things with steel they're gonna weigh a ton and it's gonna be hot it's hot it's gonna be uncomfortable and it's gonna not it's not gonna do you justice you're not gonna be happy with it they're not gonna mold to your body in the same way you're not gonna have like with plastic it will mold yeah. to you like which, the cable ties will way, mold to you there's this myth that you don't want your stays to mold to your body you do want your yeah. stays to mold to your body. Steam them and shape them just like you would a 19th century corset. Let them seize and let them get comfortable. That's how they get comfortable. Steel boning is too heavy. Bad idea. It's not good. Don't do it. Just don't. Don't, don't do, do it. it. You so, really don't have to do it. Yes. Like, the number one recommendation we have is plastic, either German plastic, mm -hmm. whalebone, zip ties. Yeah. Um, it or, behaves the closest to right. bailing. The second would be reed. It's very light, yeah. but they have Neither their issues with breakage. Mm -hmm. um, and we just simply do not recommend steel mm -hmm. at all. So 
The third yeah. question we had was about binding. <sighs> Blood, sweat, and tears. <laughs> so Sharp needle. Leather is not the o leather <laughs> is not the only mm -hmm. option you have for binding, but there's a good reason for it. So you can bind in tape. Um, mm -hmm. You have some that are bound, bound yeah, in tape. Yeah, we can talk about the problems. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the thing about stay binding is unless you're a red thread and you, and you have magic powers, yeah. um, you that are going to need to and you're going to want to do it by hand, yeah. uh, especially the leather. So you can use a nice um, densely woven tape. Mm -hmm. You don't really want to use a, a looser, like a twill tape because mm -hmm. the bones will yeah. shoot through. I've seen like grow grain uh, tape before. Petersham, like, like yeah, that you kind of steam it into shape. Um, you can shape it, um, seen linen, which is what these are bound in. Um, but leather is the most common. Um, really sharp needle, really thin leather. Um, thimble. Thimble. She's not flipping yeah. it all off. Thimble. thimble. She's learned. Um, the reason for the leather is because the bones, even when you kind of like sand off the ends or curve the ends, <laughs> they work their way through yeah, and they poke you yeah. and they come out. They didn't floss as days. Like we floss in 19th <laughs> Just century corsets. Different kind of flossing. Um, in the 18th century. They, I have seen original, like there's a pair in the Liverpool collection that had a single stitch looped through, so they had one single hole drilled into them, and then one loop stitched through to help hold them in place. I have, I don't have time for that. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, whoever has time to do that, you Go are a it. saint. Go for it. I don't have time to do that. Um, so the leather helps prevent the bones from working their way out because they will. And if yeah. you don't believe me, let's go on a journey through Abby's, <laughs> Abby's day stays. repairs. Um, <laughs> Abby's janky ass day repairs um, because I don't care. <laughs> and you do see repairs on originals. Boom. Here's one nice ugly repair. <laughs> Why? Because that bone had worked its way through the fabric. Now granted, this is only two layers of linen and linen tape, so they really work their way through pretty easily. Um, and this is... Um, mostly cable ties in here um but yeah it just worked its way through over time and i have yeah. it so there's that one i found another one oh there's yeah, that. another janky repair this is cold <laughs> abby doesn't know how to darn <laughs> um, so there's that danielle um, says is it worth it to get a glover's needle yeah anything that's going to help you get through the leather yeah. easier Pliers. <laughs> the problem with the Glover's needle is that it's actually going to slice the, so it's, it's triangular in shape. And so you're actually cutting the leather and it could potentially damage it a little bit more. So you have to be careful. When I've done it, I've just used really, really, really sharp, good hand needles. Yeah. Not the cheap ones from Joann's, the good stuff. Nice and sharp. Also a, a pair of pliers. There's yeah. some parts. Leather as a natural mm -hmm. material varies in its thickness. I learned this on um, this. This is mm -hmm. um, lambskin. Yeah. And it is basically chamois. You can use chamois as well. But even thin, stretchy leather still varies in thickness and sometimes and, and uh density. So sometimes mm -hmm. it's harder to get the needle through. Yeah. Um it's just one of those things that it's a pain in the butt. Mm -hmm. Now there's some helpful tips here. Uh Abby earlier mentioned leaving seam allowance on the neck edge yeah. and the tabs as well. You turn that down or turn it up first, mm -hmm. and this is your your fabric. Yeah. Um, and it helps to also keep the bones. This is another through. extra layer. And then you put the leather over that, mm -hmm. or the tape over that. And mm -hmm. the inside. Do you want to show the inside on your leather ones? <laughs> it's not pretty. <laughs> so the not outside, pretty. you sew it right sides together, <laughs> well, to just kind of with like back stitches. And the inside, you just turn that leather up to the inside, and you do these great big, yeah, like just fix it in place. Yeah. It doesn't have to be pretty on the inside because in theory, you're going to lay a lining over it. You can also um, do a good reason why you should probably wrap <laughs> your eyelids in leather. <laughs> I haven't done that yet. Um, but, but yeah, it doesn't have to look nice on the inside. Um, but leather is an excellent padding. So I have leather patches mm -hmm. under my arms here. This is for two reasons. One, sweat, sweat guard. I sweat. Uh, the other reason is to pad this because I've got bones coming up in here into my armpits, essentially, and mm -hmm. I need to help yeah. uh, stay comfortable there because they come up pretty high into the armpit. So leather binding, I like it, but it, it is a pain in the butt. When you're selecting leather, you want the absolute thinnest leather you can lay your hands on. The thinner, the better. Um, I wish that the leather I had used had actually been thinner. So like for glove leather, that's a good choice. Yeah. So here are my never been lined because I can't be bothered hand sewn 18th century stays. 
they're really gross on the inside. And mine look kind of similar <laughs> on the inside too. So you can see the big seam allowances that we were talking about. You can see the whip seams that we were talking about. You can see how the leather is done um, around the tabs. So I split it to help ease it around. And then I just whipped it down. I split um, them uh, as well. It's yeah. And I use linen thread here that's been heavily waxed. Um, and as you can see, like I used to wear these things every day. And they actually have held up really well. Um, the lining definitely helps if you're, if you are someone who's prone to like sweaty or anything like that, but full disclosure, this is kind of gross. I've never washed these. Um, oh, did just it kidding. No! They don't stink. <laughs> yes, they do. No, they, no, they don't. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Um, but you've got like bones coming out. All yeah, I got bones coming here. out. Like, you know, I've done some weird like alterations here and like some patching. I have like weird, like leather patching too. <laughs> because it's gotten really gross and grody looking. So like I have like fresher leather here and then it's discolored over here. But this is um, a great example of like women's stays were, they're just like our bras today. Like yeah. they were an everyday garment. They were repaired. Yeah. They were, you know, the linings were changed they out. Were they were patched up. Yeah. So it just think of this more as like, I mean, mine are pretty because mm -hmm. I would never finish them if they weren't pretty. I, yeah. I need to have pretty stays. But over the course of the, the, the life of these stays, yeah. they're going to break in. I'm going to have to repair them. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to, you know, fix this here and there. And they're going to get grody. Get bored with them and you'll make a new pair. Let's make a new pair. Um, um, we ha treat them like that. Yeah. So we just had a question about cleaning stays. Um, well, don't throw them in the washing machine. If they're leather bound, um, that's is a problem. Yeah, right? I mean, here's the thing: if you're using natural fibers to make your stays, linen and wool, they're those, both of those textiles are actually naturally antimicrobial and antibacterial. Um, so they're gonna wick away perspiration, they're gonna let it evaporate, and they themselves are not inclined to really kind of get gross and smelly. Um, if you, this is why actually one of the reasons why you line your stays is so the lining gets gross, and then you pick it out and you throw it away and you put it in a new lining. Um, so it's not washing the lining, it's actually wearing just it and it. just changing it out as you need to. As things get worn out, as, as it gets discolored, or as it just kind of gets icky, then you change out your lining. If I was to clean my stays, I would just do the, the, the theater trick and I would take a bottle of vodka, put a spray nozzle on it, and go to town. Mm -hmm. If I felt like I needed to. Put them to. in the sun. The but, sun is an amazing yeah, disinfectant. Let them air out, just hang yeah. them up, let the air flow to kind of breeze them, get the breeze going, things like that. Um, but you don't need to like detergent them or anything like that. It's it's really actually not necessary. Um, and, and something of note um, on the commercial patterns, uh, and this is also true of our new simplicity pattern uh, because they they wrote the instructions and we didn't. Mm -hmm. um, they have you put the lining in and then bind it. Uh, for those of you who are new to stay making, uh, I think we've sort of gone over your head here. Yeah. Um, Abby showed the inside of her stays. Those are completely constructed with mm -hmm. no lining. Yeah. They're bound, they're finished. Mine don't have a lining in them either and they look exactly the same on the inside. You put the lining in after. After you bind them, you fold down the edges, pain in the butt, but you fold down the edges and you just whip it. Lightly whip it in there. Mm -hmm. um, you don't even need to seam the same seams that you have on your, no, your stays. It's, it's, much, it's very rudimentary, it's very fast. Um, and it, yeah, it's because you don't, the, the lining doesn't stay in forever. You pick it out, you throw it away, you put in a new one. So you're not going to put a lot of time and effort into like nicely sewing the lining in. Yeah, it's just, just there to like protect me. them from your mm -hmm. body. Uh, so yeah, mm -hmm. I would I would just air them out. If you've bound your stays in a tape, like a non-leather material, mm -hmm. um, you can submerge them in water. Um, if you're using you really reed, that's to, a bad though. idea. If you're using plastic, it's okay. You can mm -hmm. do it. Uh, but you really don't need to. I'm not sure I've ever... I've only ever washed one pair of like a... Elizabethan bodies and it kind of wasn't necessary <laughs> yeah honestly. it's so long as you're using natural <laughs> fibers and you don't wear them against your body that's something else too that's why you have a shift that's why Lauren has a shift on now that linen shift is acting as a barrier as well from her body to her stays the shift gets washed the stays don't the shift gets gross the stays stay clean so it's not this is about protecting the clothes from you um, yeah. so keep that in mind as well yeah Cool. Okay. Will we be writing a separate book on stay making? No. No. <laughs> no, um, no, 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 no. No, we won't. <laughs> Sorry. But no. we have resources <laughs> no. for you. Um, um, I put up on the blog just recently, yeah. and we'll put a link, uh, my, mm -hmm. my preferences for uh, patterns, so ready-made patterns that you can mm -hmm. make your own stays. Ready-made stays. Let's talk about ready-made oh, stays. Oh, Yay! Yeah. Once upon a time. <laughs> go back in time with me. Once upon a time. It wasn't that long ago. Mm -hmm. 2010. You couldn't buy a pair of good 
ready-made stays that would fit you in any kind of way. There, no. It just wasn't available. Mm -hmm. There may have been some products available on the market, but they were, they were not good. Mm -hmm. Now that has changed. So let's say you're watching this and you're like, I do not want to make stays. And we like don't that. blame you. We don't blame you. <laughs> we have a recommendation for you. It is red threaded. Yeah. Uh, Cynthia makes ready-made stays. She is a master uh, corset and stay pattern maker. As current owners, and we will do a whole live cast about this, yes. I think in a few weeks. Um, as current owner, uh, owners of red threaded corsets, we're fans. We are fans. Oh. I can't believe how well oh, we're fans. how well they fit because she's coming at it just like we, we do with our shoes. She comes at it from the historically accurate perspective, and that's like, what matters. Like shape and silhouette. Yeah, as opposed to maybe it didn't matter so much for like Fredericks of Hollywood. They don't know anything about Victorian corsets yeah. or 18th century stays. So if you want a pair of ready-made stays, you can buy them off the rack from Cynthia for a... They look like they're expensive, but when, when you look at how many hours go into something like this and You're, that they may yeah. or may not fit, it's worth it to buy ready-made stays from her. You can just, also have her make them yeah. custom for you. Yeah, and she also has patterns, so you can just buy the patterns from her. Her yeah. shapes are great. They look amazing, and full disclosure, as someone who is hands sewn, <laughs> done like the crazy 18th century like stay making like rabbit hole, like I've gone full hog y'all, like absolute bat shit about it. I have every intention of buying stays from Cynthia. Yeah, <laughs> like I, every intention. I'm like, why? No, why I, would I do I this to myself? I just finished these, but I'm like, like <laughs> why didn't I just? Because it took yeah. me, and I have fitting issues. I was like, why didn't I just buy a pair yeah, of it's like red threaded stays? And there's nothing wrong either. with that. There's no. nothing wrong with that we all want to get to making the pretty gowns right you want to have the right shape yeah. you want to have a nice dependable pair of underpinnings you know yeah. to work with um but you don't want to spend like 20 30 50 100 hours making your own yeah. stays oh. i totally get it hi mom <laughs> oh, we've, uh, we've also just had like a blow up about questions um for those who missed it the person we're talking about with amazing ready-made stays and corsets is cynthia Sechi from red threaded red is in like the color of my thread of my sweater Thread is in your threaded like the needle. needle. Yeah, red threaded. Red threaded. Um, so that's who makes amazing ready-made stays, and they're getting ready to do a full restock and coming really soon. Yeah, and new styles and we uh, have so much to talk about. We want to do a review over what we own. Yeah, like we're gonna do another live cast, and it's gonna be a lot about Cynthia's amazing product. Um, beginner patterns. Well, we obviously have two out with simplicity as well. Um, when it comes to stay patterns, um, the one. Yeah. The newest one um, here featuring her, my face. Abby. Uh, it's weird. Yeah. It's eight, five, <laughs> eight, five, seven, nine. And um, then this is good for about 1700 to 1770. Yeah. Um, 8162 simplicity is good for kind of the mid 70s up into the 90s. Yeah. Um, th both of these, because simplicity's pattern blocks are, are tend to be a bit short waisted for the the underwear. Both mm -hmm. of these may need some waist adjustment. We did actually try to lengthen them. We lengthened these. Like I added an extra inch to the sample pattern that we sent to them to help make sure that they weren't going to become too short waisted. Yeah. But if you are long in the torso, like Lauren and I are, you will probably need to lengthen these. Yeah. Um, so do a mock up. Yeah, do a mock up. <laughs> just keep that in mind. It could be cardboard. It could be heavy jean fabric with. Zip ties taped onto it. Yeah. Do a mock-up. Do a mock-up. Um, just to determine, mm -hmm. you know, where you want the neckline. Because mm -hmm. some people like them higher. I like mm -hmm. them lower. And where you, where the waist mm -hmm. needs to be. Um, yeah. Let's see. Like we said, Cynthia, she she does ready-made stays, but she also does custom patterns as well as just kind yeah, of custom small, medium, and large patterns as well. Yeah. Butterick so, has their pattern. Butterick. Um, um, Sign of the Golden Scissors. Has theirs. And there's some um, books as well. If you are into the scaling up of mm -hmm. gridded or scaled patterns, um, corsets and Cradlins yeah. has a lot of different options. Corsets by Jill Salen. Um, there's another Corsets and Stays book. Uh, they kind of take a more modern approach, but mm -hmm. it'll, it'll get you there. Yeah. Um, and my personal favorite, and this takes some ingenuity, um, the Custom Corset Pattern Generator online. Oh, yeah. It is for a very basic pair of Elizabethan bodies um, to your measurements, and it really does work for your measurements. In order to turn mm -hmm. those into 18th century stays, you're going to have to get jiggy with doing the seam lines. Mm -hmm. um, so it's going to take some experimentation with the neckline and the seam lines. Yeah. But that's what I use to pattern 
stays with and mm-hmm. it's always worked pretty well for me except this time mm-hmm. when I put the wrong measurements in. Oop, haha. So do your measurements. It's always nice to think you're fatter than you actually are, right? <laughs> no. Anyway. Um, <laughs> we had a question about maternity stays. Yeah, so maternity stays are really cool and someone actually kind of answered it in the comments. Um, it's lacing. Um, so center front, center back, and then you also will see side lacing here. So that way you can open up uh, the lacing to help accommodate the growing tum tum. And if you look at 18th century prints, this is really funny. You can always know a woman's pregnant because her her gown doesn't like just kind of do the normal thing. It starts to like go out like that, and so she doesn't have like a curve over the tummy. It's like this hard angle, and then it's like poof, like that. <laughs> um, and so it's not about like curving over the tum tum. It's just kind of like giving room for the tum tum to grow. Um, and your like petticoats and everything will kind of rise up a little over bit in the front, and that's yeah. okay. Um, they, they was, that's what you see in the images, like that's what happened. Um, so yeah, it's the side lacing here as well. I think, I don't know if Amber really blogged about it too much, but Amber Minendahl, um, Welch, no, um, Lady of the Wilderness is I think her blog, um, Virgil's Fine Goods? Fine Goods is her Etsy shop. She made maternity stays, I think just about a year, or about maybe a year and a half ago, two years ago. Um, I don't know if she blogged about them because what I would see would be on her face, like just her sharing photos. Um, but I, if she did blog about it, that would be a really good place to check out and see them in action. Um, so yeah. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Kathy. Um, um, we had a question further back about what's the difference between jumps and corset and stays. Do, oh. you, do you want to tackle that behemoth? <laughs> How much time do we have? Uh, Hello, let's, class. Let's try and keep it kind of short. I really wish I had a PowerPoint. Right <laughs> Hi, class. Welcome to one of my favorite subjects. Uh, so, um, so this is something that is changing with research, and this is something that I've done rabbit holes about, and people have different opinions on, and that's fine because there's a whole load of research that is just being discovered exactly. that people are finding, um, that people have found before, and they're applying. It's, it's so it is changing. Stays are a conical boned support garment. Okay. Yeah. These in are stays. French, and I'm sorry, it's been. I've learned a lot of Swedish from my friend after f- taking French, so I'm gonna butcher this. Anyone who's listening, from looking at the French to English dictionaries from the 18th century, so the primary documents of the 18th century, stays are noted as corps à la baleine, so bodies Body of à la baleine, bone, a whalebone. Okay. Yeah. Jumps are referred to as a corset. Softer. Softer. Yeah. So, so jumps are softer. Okay, and stays are not corsets. Got it? Stays yeah. aren't corsets. There are two different things, two at, different that, things. at this time. At this time. Yeah. Um, so what we're seeing in the 18th century is just different options. Jumps are softer. Jumps provide a more natural body shape. Um, they're not going to be as heavily boned. And then there's also this kind of weird crossover to jumps and waistcoats for women, which again, have minimal, if any, boning in them and are very soft. Um, they still support would provide a little bit of chest support, but they're not gonna give you the support or the structure like a pair of stays would. A corset is a 19th century garment. Yeah, you get the um, change in terminology in the late 1790s Yeah, when the stays kind of, mm-hmm. they're contemporary. Some sources, primary sources call, call them stays, stays, some call them, call them corsets. I, it's kind of And I think French what we're seeing there is Frenchifying. It's so Frenchifying. It's, it's, it's a Francophile thing going on. Um, this has to do with immigration rules and changing in the UK um, and the 18th century, allowing French um, tradespeople to actually come over. It becomes very trendy to start, just like today. You know, it's like, oh, well, it's all of this. Or I got this black t-shirt from Paris, so it's instantly cooler than my black t-shirt from Target, even though they're probably actually made in the same factory. It's just that it's from France, yeah. so it's fashionable and it's cool. Yeah. So using the term okay. corset, but there is, is a shift. A, it's thing there. There is a shift in the rigidity of mm-hmm. stay slash corset in the 1790s, yeah. the later 1790s, with the rising rising waistline, yeah. um, to a very lightly boned, much softer support yeah. garment. Yeah. So that kind of sticks with what Abby was saying earlier about yeah. the definition of jump slash corset. corset. And how it's it may reflect more of a body shape as well, but they were still using stays to describe that same garment. Um, So there's there's a body shape thing, there's a construction thing. We have also just the trend for French terminology when it comes to clothing. Um, Instead of calling it just a polonaise gown, all of a sudden you start seeing people refer to things as robot polonaise in in England and London advertisements as well. This is later. Again, it's an immigration thing. It's a trend thing. It's a, France is so cool. You get it in shoes too. You get English maker, uh, footwear makers um, putting 
French labels in their shoes to, mm -hmm. is a sales point to try yeah. and make it sound like they're more exotic. So there's there's a few yeah. different things going on there. Yeah, so that was jumps. a very very short. <laughs> if you really, it, it, it gets more complicated with warmth garments and yeah. how they're worn. If they're worn over the stage, if, if they're you, worn under the stage, or not in, in lieu of the stage. If you want a good time, buy me a couple of cocktails <laughs> and ask me that question, and then just sit down. Like, so uh, yeah. we have a question: How do you feel about corded stays? Um, corded stays. In my mind, they come later, so you do you get see cording in cording them. I think the parts of them, like the McCord ones, have like decorative. But you don't. You're still getting baleen. But it's still like boning, yeah. You know, hit for the core all baleen that all yeah, um, I think so. The heavily bone stays or the, the partially bone stays yeah. still seem to have the more rigid boning in them. I've yeah. made an entirely hemp hemp corded boned mm -hmm. pair of bodies. Um, when I was uh, thinner and <laughs> less busty than I am now and they seem to be supportive mm -hmm. but more in the jumps kind of way of the softer yeah. body the softer kind of you're not going to get the garment. structure that you that you would want so depending on what you're going for I don't know if I've ever seen an original pair that I think everything I've ever looked at has had it might have had like cording in, in it in a decorative way um, but not in but a, not in a way. structural way, yeah. if that makes sense. Until you get to nearly 1800 yeah. and then that, that changes because mm -hmm. you get a little cording here and a little And then it's there. like cording everywhere all the time. How do how do we get you guys to do an episode of Drunk History? Please suggest us! I would love to do that. You all don't even know what happens when I have three cocktails. Well, some of you do if you went to costume college last year. Oh my god. <laughs> That's a different That's story. Um, so I think... Were there any other questions that we missed um, that, that just kind of went zooming by? Anything you can think of about stays? Um, so we've covered where to get them, or yeah. patterns for them. We've covered Boning. what the heck these Chrissy Crossy shoulder straps, straps are. are for, that they're optional. Uh, materials, that's materials. a good one. Boning, I think the only thing I think of is boning. Because some people asked, because we did the really straight... Uh, vertical boning in the center front of these and I, some people are asking is that period correct and it's like yep yeah, just yeah. look at originals but you do also see uh, where they're angled in at either very very slight or much more uh, much more I guess aggressively if you want to do it that way go right ahead all you need to do to change the, <laughs> the boning patterns for this is just take a ruler and go to yeah. town like if you don't like the vertical boning here don't do it yeah. It's really that simple. You don't have to feel obligated to do it. You can adjust the boning pattern as what you want to do. So look at originals in uh, like Google Pinterest, look at originals in museums, look at their boning layout and do what you want to do. Like that works for what you're trying to do. Okay. So, oh, oh Nicole has a good idea. Textiles. Okay. Let's, let's quickly go through the, cause we've had four in a row. How do I get my eyelids to look pretty? Don't uh, worry about it. The golden rule. Uh, well, it's not a rule. The golden tip. This is what I do. So first off, most people over sew their eyelets. Here's how you do an eyelet. You take your spiky stabber, the awl, your awl, um, and you stab it through, which oh spreads God. the fibers rather than breaking the fibers. Yes, that's important. Yes. You don't want to cut it. You want to use the you awl. You want to use an awl. And then you take a double heavily waxed, uh, pretty heavy weight thread, and you do maybe, I don't know, eight to ten yeah, stitches. Yeah, it just depends. I'm around. an over sewer on yeah, my I'm getting, I'm getting better. And then they're kind of going to start to be sort of like a circle. And then you take the awl again and you stick it through the hole. Yeah. Right? Uh -huh. And that makes them nice and round. But don't overthink it because if you wear these at all and you don't bother to put the, la the leather wrap in the, la in the eyelets, this is actually what's going to happen. Yeah. Is they're going to get pulled out. So... History tip. That's why the metal, in. <laughs> metal grommets were invented. Put the leather in. Eyelids Don't are do not strong. Do as I grommets. say, not as I do. Um, here's another one. Where can I get lacing for stays? Well, you can see I've just used a satin yeah. ribbon, which I think is um, pretty. Um, you can use a thin. I use linen tape. Thin linen tape. Yeah. You can get that at Burnley and Trowbridge. Yeah, like quarter inch wide linen tape. That's what I've used. It's last. It lasts pretty well. If you want to use just like normal corset lacing, that's. It's really up to you. Historically accurate like cording that like what kind of survives with very very few originals we don't really see much like that if you're getting really nitpicky um so you just don't want something that's gonna stretch yeah you don't want it to stretch or fray in fray you want it to be strong you want it to be sturdy i use linen tape lauren uses satin ribbon satin from joanne's um separate lining in the tabs um uh, that does actually make it easier yeah. if you if you do like you know, you, yeah. you're gonna have a seam, or well, yeah, you'll see that. Yeah. here. You do see it sometimes. You you see it in leather. Like yeah, I was gonna say tab. if you're like 
like really wanting to make these things like super comfy and last a long time if you have the energy to 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 back them in leather as well that's a really yeah. cool thing to and do and then you do your cotton muslin linen whatever lining yeah don't top. <laughs> well i guess if you use modern muslin like don't use it since your muslin that won't work. um nicole has a uh, yeah. excellent question maybe what types of textiles base <laughs> canvas or outer yeah. layers so a lot of people um use too much material in their stays you think um, so? I'm saying this because, like, for instance, the simplicity pattern is like use four layers, um, and two of them need to be cotille. That's not necessarily true for stays. That's like cotille didn't too exist much. for stays. Cotille didn't exist. These stays are made out of a heavy kind of canvasy fabric and a heavy linen, mm -hmm. and that's it. Mm -hmm. That's that's really thin though, to be honest. Like. Holding up pretty well. Yeah, but like mine, are, <laughs> mine are two layers. Like I did two layers of linen, so you do see two layers. But what you yeah. what you see in originals is two layers of heavy linen and then an outer layer, um, and that's that's what you see a lot of too, and it has to do with just helping keep the boating and <laughs> from working its way out. <laughs> um, but if you're so, using so like, like a pretty cotton or yeah. silk or whatever, then you do need you at, need that at minimum. You need two heavy layer fabrics. Yes. So jean, heavy twill. Mm -hmm. um, this is upholstery cotton, heavy, heavy linen. Um, I mean, yeah. heavy linen. Yeah, it's uh, like treated linen, uh, canvas upholstery linen, linen. A, a very heavy yeah. weight, very densely woven linen. That's what I've always yeah. used. And then an outer layer. In originals, you see linen, you see wool, you will see like twilled silk and things like that. The highly decorative stays, they're, they might not actually just be purely stays, that they're actually probably meant to be visible. Uh, especially later on in the 18th century, you see very plain, drab, natural colors. And a lot of that probably actually has to do with how thin the fabrics were getting and how trendy it was to have light colored fabrics. You don't want dark green stays sticking out of your white muslin spotted gown, right? Yeah. So you're gonna go for no more natural. That's why my stays are yellow or, or just natural linen. And 17, like the one that we did for the, for the simplicity pattern, it's kind of this weird like orangey color. It's a more natural color, like a dark green, a dark blue, a dark red, things like that. Yeah. A it thin, worsted topper. Yeah. It's durable. Um, it's comfortable. Like I said earlier, the wool is antimicrobial, antibacterial. Uh, um, so, so the outer layer is is depend. It just depends on how historically accurate you're really kind of going for. Um, but a natural fiber inside, densely woven. You don't have to use cotil. That's 19th century. Um, yeah. Drill. Yeah, heavy utility, linen. utility fabrics, mattress utility fabric. Yeah, it makes great stays. Um, you just a heavy duty fabric. Now mm -hmm. a lot of people don't understand that they think that this the the shaping of stays and corsets comes from the boning. The shaping comes from the fabric, which is held firm by the boning. The boning is supporting the fabric. The fabric is what's wrapping around your body and compressing it. Right. So they work together. So you mm -hmm. can't have too light of a fabric with really heavy boning and you can't have too heavy of the boning, uh, sorry, too heavy of a fabric without mm -hmm. having some boning in there to keep it from buckling, particularly like here yeah. at the waist or twisting. Mm -hmm. So they do work together. If you have really, really heavy fabrics, maybe consider um, the quarter inch zip tie boning or the yeah. thinner whale bone and more of them. Or if you have the lighter fabric, you can do the heavier boning. You it know, just kind of depends. depends. Like what works they work together. You. Like there's so many like, well, if your body's like this and this is what you're going for, or this over here and this is what you're going for. There's a lot of, well, if this, then that, or that, then this kind of thing when it comes to stain making, because we are talking about a hundred years here. Yeah. Um, and like I said, I've seen an original that had a steel rod going down the center front. Yeah. Because that sounds comfy. Yeah. Mm. Busks are a thing. I've never worn a busk. Um, busks yeah. Are a thing. And a lot of people like to wear busks. I have never worn them either. I've been bad about it. You wore one in your Regency corset didn't you? well because you have to <laughs> it's the only way you can actually get the thing to stay up and then it mine creeped out it was weird cool yeah. okay so i think that's it mm -hmm. um will this video be available for reference later yes it's going to stay on our facebook timeline forever mm -hmm. so you can watch it back unless something um, weird happens with facebook unless yeah <laughs> and they delete all our videos um, um so yeah i think that's pretty much it uh, further on, if you have questions while we are not live, we're going to answer them with comments. Mm -hmm. um, you can always message us or leave comments or whatever, and we'll try and help you the best we can. Mm -hmm. um, I will post links in the comments to those two posts that we made on the American Duchess blog about lengthening stays and also um, patterns and books and ready-made, where to buy this stuff. Um, again, that's, those are my personal lists. They're not... Um, 
they, they don't have yeah. everything on them and it's just because I don't have experience with some of those things so I don't feel comfortable recommending them because yeah. what if they suck? I don't know. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the things that I, that I have had experience with and I do like yeah. that you recommend are on that list. It's a place to get yeah. started. All right. So, um, oh, there was one more question and just to leave off with the patterns. So I know that simplicity is not sold everywhere now. Mm -hmm. um, the UK, guys, we really don't know. If simplicity patterns are usually available somewhere in the UK, you should be able to buy them. Mm -hmm. um, I think Simplicity's website will ship internationally, but I'm not sure. This is always the fun part about being um, yeah. contracted with another company, is that we don't actually produce these patterns. We made the pattern, the master pattern. Mm -hmm. We didn't write the instructions. We didn't do the scaling up, and we don't distribute them. So mm -hmm. I, I'm afraid I can't answer questions about yeah, if they're available, but Simplicity probably can. Yeah. Um, eBay, I know there's always sellers on eBay and sometimes on Etsy mm -hmm. who uh, buy these on the $1 pattern sale and then they sell them for like five bucks. Mm -hmm. So that's worth a shot as well. So hopefully that mm -hmm. answers the question. Yeah. Um, but we really hope what, that you like what we've done. Um, again, if you have more questions, feel free mm -hmm. to ping us. Okay, I think that's it. Bye, and guys. If you guys want to start a campaign to get us on Drunk History, I totally support this. <laughs> yes, that sounds like We're fun. into it. We'll get drunk and do history. It'll be fantastic. We won't actually I'll be pretend drunk done. because I don't drink. <laughs> I'll do it. Sure. I'll drink for her, um, too. We'll absolutely. Great. I'll just fall asleep on the floor. Next week, we're going to do another live cast at noon, and we're going to be showing you all of the new American Duchess shoes. <laughs> I'm so for excited. Spring. I'm so excited. Really, really fun I'm stuff. I'm so excited. Um, and talking about the history behind them and our design directions and, and showing you stuff. Yeah, anyway, we love you guys. And we've gone long, so thank you very much. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.